anyone in your life right now who is contributing to your destruction your downfall your lukewarmness this night i separate you and them forever you are healthy you are asking god why the hospital will show you how irrelevant your question is don't thank god because we are happy we thank god to become happy there will be money this year there will be money can you can you receive your own portion receive now everyone who is a helper to your destiny wherever they are i call them by prophecy appear in your life now have a personal time for an end of year retreat please write it down in my opinion and i say this as an opinion you are not a serious christian if you actually allow this period to just pass up until resumption or next year without dedicating at least one two three days to spend time with god please write it down a retreat is a time that you take a loan there are family retreats there are corporate retreats but this kind of retreat is between you and god a time alone with god what do you do during retreats please write it down number one the first thing that you do during a retreat is thanksgiving personal thanksgiving just like we did here but now you are is between you and your maker your savior you are thanking him personally for all that he's done number two appraisal you appraise the year in light of scripture in light of god's blueprint retreats are moments where we appraise our lives you sit down what assignment has god given me how did i live to most people do not go forward because they don't look back and ask questions for many of you as you appraise yourself you find out ah in march in april and may i made this and that decision look what it's cost me now i learn from it you are the retreat is now profiting you and let me advise you children couple don't start don't stop one another from having profitable retreats using all kinds of scripture what god has joined together leave allow yourself to spend time with with the lord or parents and children or children and parents there is a corporate retreat but there is a personal retreat where it is you and god you can lock yourself in a room you have the resources you can go somewhere there are all kinds of places where you can stay and flog it out with destiny there are six areas you must review six areas of your life number one your spiritual growth and progress just a quick guide and we'll pray number one your spiritual growth and progress you want to spend time having a retreat you must review your spiritual growth and progress can i say i have grown spiritually sincerely number two your level of mental transformation the second area you must review unashamedly have i sustained superior beliefs or i still have my old wrong faulty thinking have i transited has there been that level of mental maturity number three your health you may have heard it in my teachings that there was a year that i i found out that three years in a row the worst performing area of these six areas i'm about to list to list was my health the area i did not really pay attention to three years in a row after doing all this i found out that the worst performing area in my life was my health i took that as a warning from the lord you would die the death of a fool if you don't start paying attention to your health and many people you are listening to me now we've done a few teachings that relate to that this is one of the things you learn during retreat what happened this year i ate carelessly i did this one i did that how many times did you fast this year two times the holy ghost says write it you are seeing by yourself with all the attack this year you fasted only twice write it down and you didn't even finish it six corporate fast you did not family fast the one you called for you did not even do it can i tell you this your retreat is not a true retreat if it's not completely honest between you and god 
this is you and god alone you must be sincere 100 percent my health did i take care of myself was i careless did i spend more on clothes than i did my health did i spend more eating all kinds of things the sons of the prophet said there is death in the pot did i kill myself more this year than every other year combined you write it down you don't write it to condemn yourself you write it because you are about to rise to a new level are you getting the idea now number what now three number four the fourth area that you have to and don't rush that area is your financial progress write it down when you go for retreats you have to sit down and look at your finances for some of you you will be surprised when you see how much god has blessed you with this year and you check there was nothing is left now careless decisions wrong decisions wrong companies that ate up the glory of god revealed through your finances now you write it down with a view to correcting these things maybe you made business decisions you didn't think you didn't seek counsel you, you were rash in it and now you paid the price you lost money don't feel bad but write it and learn maybe carelessness you went for every wedding and every birthday whether it was your own or not you saw something in an area you went there and you were dancing and spray your children's school fees write it down <laughs> retreats are we learning finances and don't don't allow people who tell you that making financial progress is not important sooner or later you'll find out that you were not sincere with yourself it's better to flog it out early so that it gives you the liberty to serve god in peace are we together and then number five your purpose and your destiny lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written of me remember in the law of seasons i taught you that there are four seasons life is separated into four major seasons there is the morning stage there is the afternoon stage there is the evening stage there is the night stage zero to 25 is your morning stage 26 to 50 is your afternoon stage 51 to 75 is your evening stage anything after 75 is your night stage many of us what you would have done from 0 to 25 now you are 30 or 40 or 45 or 50 you are just getting born again is this year you got born again now i salute you for giving your life to jesus christ it's, it's better late than never but some of you have not even received the baptism of the holy spirit you see so before you start this entire journey and then on learning some of these wrong things that came either from culture came from wrong background came from wrong mentorship and now start embracing the truth it will take time so you write it down for many of us you have not really found what you will spend your life doing as far as the kingdom is concerned retreats are times when we take an honest appraisal can i tell you there is nothing dr miles dearly revered mentor he said this he said that it is not necessarily how long we live that matters even though longevity is a blessing and it's a provision that we must press for but that efficiency is by far greater than longevity jesus spent 33 years and within 33 years he made a mark can you imagine he spent 30 years preparing for his assignment and in three years he was done completely done three years until today the world is grateful until forever for three years of effective living dr munro of blessed memory also teaches that the wealthiest place it's not the oil mines in Nigeria, parts of Africa and the Middle East, or the gold mines in Congo, South Africa and all of that, but the symmetry, he says, where dreams, books that were never written that would have blessed people, books, people died with books, people died with businesses, people died with anointings like Elisha, 
and never gave it visibility and manifestation can i tell you this whether you like it or not no matter how you jump up and down you are getting older every year i must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day jesus is talking not an angel for the night cometh when no man no matter who you are once you are a man when the night comes you cannot walk again you may not die but you cannot walk again god's servant bishop Oedeko will say no matter go on an end of year retreat go on an end dash of year retreat end of year or personal retreat if you want to write it that way go on an end of year retreat you can never sustainably be light and salt until you understand the power and the mystery of retreats isaiah chapter 40 please let's begin our reading from verse 28 the bible there spells clearly the condition of man it says has thou not known has thou not heard that the everlasting god the lord the creator of the ends of the earth he fainted not neither is he weary it's a question there is no searching of his understanding now 29 it says he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might he increased strength here is the condition of man that necessitates retreat ready one to read let's read together even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall this is not a negative pronouncement it's a description of a condition that is common to all men that the wear and tear that happens to you spiritually emotionally psychologically and even physically provided you are bound in this mortal body that that wear and tear is present with all men that even the youth the bible says the glory of the young men is their strength but that the youth will faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall the bailout is in 31 but they that means not everybody will be interested in this spiritual process but they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles the bible says by this mystery they will run and it will look like they never get tired you are human but why are you not tired because they have found the power and the excellency of retreats and then they shall walk and not faint what is a retreat let's discuss this point for seriously a retreat is a time set apart to be with the lord please write a retreat is a time set apart to be with the lord to obtain renewal direction and fresh empowerment a retreat is a time set apart to be with the lord to obtain renewal to obtain direction and to obtain fresh empowerment i'll take it one last time that a retreat is a time set apart to be with the lord to obtain renewal to obtain direction and to obtain fresh empowerment so when we talk about a retreat for a believer it means a time that you set apart to be with the lord retreats can be corporate that means a corporate organization a church can have a retreat an individual a family can have a retreat but my emphasis here for tonight is a personal retreat hallelujah and there are a number of things that must be captured in your retreat so you can call it 4a or let me just guide you many of us do not understand what we need to do during a retreat it's important that i spell this out just to create a guide for us so that you will have an effective and a rich retreat many people just lock themselves and they fast and pray sleep and wake up even watch movies and go out that is not an effective retreat There are a, a few things that must happen in a retreat. Otherwise, it's not a retreat. Number one, thanksgiving. A retreat is a moment of lavish, uncensored thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. 
Psalm 92 from verse 1 to 4. Let's hurry up. We're discussing retreats as one of the instructions and now just helping us to shed more light. What and what should happen in a retreat? Number one, thanksgiving. It is a good thing the Bible says to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises to thy name, O Most High. Reading to 4 verse 2. To show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. 3. Upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the psaltery, upon the harp, with a solemn sound verse 4 it says for thou O lord had made me glad through thy walk i will triumph in the works of thy hands it is a good thing to give thanks to the lord your retreat is not complete it's not even started if you do not start with thanksgiving so you are asking apostle if i set out time with god what should happen what are the activities that define a potent retreat number one thanksgiving you lock up yourself and you say lord thank you look what you've done in my life thank you for your mercy is that true you begin to list them you count your blessings one by one it says all oh, that men would praise the lord for his goodness and for his marvelous works to the children of men he has broken the gates of brass. He has caught the bars of iron in sunder. Lord, thank you for life. Thank you for grace. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, the lifter up of my head I lay me down and I slept I wait for the Lord sustain me the last time I checked statistic tells us that eight people die per second eight people die per second I don't know how I don't know what's the current figure now eight people that means from the time i started this message till now count how many people have died we need to learn to be grateful to god be thankful count your blessings and mention them one by one lord look what you've done in my life look what you've done in this ministry look what you've done in this family i am here to say thank you like the one leper the bible records that jesus was on his way passing but when the one leper returned he found him still waiting there he waits for your gratitude thank you for lifting thank you for lifting thank you for lifting my for some of you in the midst of the chaos and the economic crisis in this nation and across Africa, God preserved you as if you did not stay here. Some of you did not even have jobs yet you never begged. How could you be so insensitive and careless when you get before the God of heaven, you, you get down on your knees and say thank you. You have changed my story. You have turned my mourning to dancing, my sorrow to joy. That all who knew me can no longer identify me because the Lord has magnified fight me in the midst of his people learn to be thankful number two what do I do in a retreat be an honest appraisal of the year or the season an honest appraisal this is the second thing you do in a retreat an honest appraisal appraisal is spelled a p p r a i s a l a p p r a i s a l an honest appraisal of the year past or the season past a retreat is usually is uh, there are all kinds of retreats i'm not going in there i've done those teachings and i'm sure that i will do it again next year but just for you to know that there are periodic retreats weekly there are monthly retreats but there are strategic retreats at defining moments in your life like maybe birthdays or end of year like we have it now because a major season is changing in your life an honest appraisal of the year or the season past 
in Psalm 30, in, in Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 1, the Bible says, through desire, a man having separated himself, he says he seeketh and intermeddleth with wisdom. When you, when you take out time to be thoughtful and to appraise the year, you appraise the year against a number of parameters. Number one, your spiritual life. I'm just listing them. Number two, your mental transformation. Number three, your health and your wellness. Number four, purpose and your assignment. To what degree did you advance on that wise? Number five, your finances. Number six, your relationships. There are indices that you use to appraise yourself. Don't just get there and say, did I make money this year? Yes, I think it was a nice year. No. We always use parameters like money and physical things to measure how good the year was. But the success is a, is a composite of many dimensions. Your excelling in all these dimensions is, is what adds to your overall success. Your spiritual life, mental transformation, your health and your wellness, your finances, your assignment, relationships. Take an honest appraisal of your life. Is someone learning now? How was this year 2022? Spiritually, can I say I made progress? My prayer life, my word study life, did I grow in character, loving and, and, and walking in the ways of God? How about mental transformation? Did you submit yourself to superior materials to build your mind, build your philosophies and your orientation? How about your health? Hallelujah. How about your finances? Some of you didn't do well this year in your finances. And the product, you see, you do not prosper off the economy. You prosper off your understanding. It is true. The economy only contributes to your prosperity. It's not the basis of your prosperity. It is your understanding, your philosophy, your overall understanding. It is not even what you do. It is what you know that supports what you do. So if you find out that it was a bad year, sadly speaking, financially, there's no need beating yourself down. That's the purpose of a retreat. You take inventory. Some of us were blessed by God this year, but we were careless over our finances. If you take inventory, millions, tens of millions, maybe hundreds of millions and even billions got into our hands. But there may not be anything to show for it because we spent it like the prodigal son and now we are feeding with the swine. But thank God the prodigal son showed us that there is still hope. He says, I will arise and I will go to my father. In your case, you must arise and go from where you started correctly from. Are we learning? Very, very powerful. How about purpose and assignment? Do you know there are people, I was so touched by the testimony of the gentleman here. He said when he got a job, notice the decline in his life now. There are people, the moment they become blessed or the blessings of the Lord start speaking in their lives, especially financially, let me tell you the truth, it takes a greater level of discipline to still maintain spiritual things when you are blessed because now you have options. There are many people that look good. They are not good. It's just the economic condition that made them that way because there is no option. You are, you are righteous to the degree to which we see the alternatives in your life. Are we together? If you are poor, don't say you are humble. By what parameter? We have to see, we, 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 you have to be given an opportunity to see that I can go this way, but I choose to remain this way. Now you are deserving of honor. Are we learning now? This is very important. An honest appraisal of your life. Let me tell you the truth. Do you know why a retreat is personal? Because that is a time where you tell the absolute truth before God. If you lie to yourself in a retreat, I don't know what to call you now. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. I love you forever I love you forever I love you forever 
a time of appraisal is when Jesus himself the light shines his light upon your life and you see yourself in the state of who he is ah, this year I did not do well in my spiritual life this year I was careless this year as a father I was not responsible over my family there's nothing to be ashamed of you are before the God of heaven this year I've been I was insensitive to my wife and my children maybe because of the financial pressure I did something that I did not believe I would do Lord you see when you have an understanding from the place of appraisal now you can cry for his mercy thoughtfulness is powerful to lock yourself and sit down ah, I lost this favor door because of carelessness and insensitivity what can I learn from it is someone learning number three what do you do during a retreat I hope I've not lost you what do you do during a retreat a retreat is a moment to get direction for the next season please write it down when you are done with appraisal next is direction direction your retreat is not over if you come out confused because you have that is the assignment of that place why am i teaching you this so that you know what to avoid it means anything that can distract you should not follow you to the place of retreat for instance movies except if it's a movie that teaches you something most of us you already know your vulnerability when you are going for a retreat be serious you can't carry a series uh, uh, uh what they call this thing people you know all the, the movies and all of that and then you pray for 30 minutes and then you just promise yourself that i'll just watch for 10 minutes or football or something and before you know it three days people clap for you thinking you were flogging it out with destiny whereas you allowed yourself to be distracted see look up please laugh but listen the bible says seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and it says to run with perseverance the race that is set before us looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was said where before him he endured the cross and despised the shame if your phone would distract you off it personally during a retreat i off my phone completely or i can put it on flight mode if i need to use it maybe get some information from it you can on it by 12 midnight for 10 minutes so that all the text messages that should come in come in and then you off it back in case there's an emergency Apostle, I'm off my phone. You see, that you should go and flog out that issue in a retreat. The fact that you cannot give up uh, gadgets just to spend time with God, it means then that you may not be having the kind of focus it takes for a great destiny. Someone shout direction. direction. Our speed in life is based on the direction we have. Your life will always slow down if you don't know where you are going. Even in driving, if you know where you are going, you will run with speed and arrive there. But if you don't know where you are going, you have to slow down in case you are wrong. It's dangerous to turn the path of destiny in confusion. Psalm 32 and verse 8. This is a prophetic word for someone. Psalm 32 and verse 8. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my eyes. Someone shout amen. Amen. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 6, it says, In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. God can direct men. In the place of retreat, you are flogging it out. And God says, listen, this location you are, you need to move to another one. One word from God can bail you out. Are we together? I told you that the power of God only supports what is the will of God. The, 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 the administration of spiritual power is with respect to the will of God. Outside of the will of God, the power of God does not have an assignment. The assignment of the power of God is to bring you into the will of God. Please lift your hands as I prophesy everyone. Ooh. 
I have grown to respect the power of prophecy. I know that for many of you, if I tell you which will you choose to prophesy over your life or to lay hands on you, you would prefer the laying on of hands because it looks like there is a physical contact. Not so. Prophecy is powerful, very powerful. Please, I want you to shout amen from the depth of your heart. This is where you get to receive everything. Shout amen. This is where the fire gets to fall on your life. This is where everybody participates. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command breakthroughs to come into your life. Supernatural breakthrough. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please lay your hands on your head, I pray. Father, mm, this will come mighty on some of you. A baptism of the spirit of wisdom. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Shake Receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it now. Now, wisdom in business, wisdom in career. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I pray for anyone who is confused here, trusting God for direction. In the name of Jesus, may the of God come to you and bring you direction in the name of Jesus Christ everything you have tried and tried to do and have not been able to do I speak over your life go back and do it again go back and do it again in the name of Jesus the kind of favor you have not seen from January till now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ may that favor come upon your life may that favor come upon your life receive it in the name of Jesus receive it in the name of Jesus where are the helpers who are supposed to help your destiny and have refused to locate you wherever they are everybody in life needs a helper to move to the next level between you and the next level is the ministry of a helper right now everything that has died in your hands i don't care what it is i'm prophesying to you everything that has died in your hands by the anointing of the holy spirit that same voice that called lazarus from the grave right now calls that dying business from the grave calls that dying destiny from the grave in the name of jesus christ everything that is dead in your life comes alive now hallelujah Every spirit that torments you and your family in any way, in dreams, in visions, I declare right now, they are silenced forever in your life. They are silenced forever in your life. 